Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your 13th AngularJS tutorial and in this video we're going to take a look at the ng-click directive. <laughs> okay then guys, so the ng-click directive is really cool. Um, it allows us to respond to click events from the user on elements. So say for example a user clicks a button, we could attach the ng-click directive to that button and then respond to that click in some way or other, okay? So we're going to take a look at that in this tutorial and to do so we're going to work through an example whereby we're going to give the user the option to order these ninjas by their name, which it currently is being by default, or by another property. And that other property we're going to allow them to order by is the belt and it's going to be in alphabetical order by belt, all right? So, to do that, what we need to do is create two buttons. One button is going to order the list by name, one button is going to order the list by the belt. Alright, so let's go ahead and add these buttons in our controller right here. I'm just going to come to the top of the controller and I'm going to cre uh, create a button and this is going to have an ng click attribute associated to it. I'm not going to fill this in just yet, we'll come to that in a minute, but in the button I'll write order by name. So that's the button they're going to click if they want to order it by name. Then we'll do another button and this time it's going to say order by belt. So that's going to order it by the belt color. Now currently like we said these ninjas are all being ordered by the name property and we're passing that name property through to this order by filter in this string. So what's happening is Angular is finding that name property in the string then it's looking in our controller for this name in the data right there. It finds it and it's ordering it by the name. Now, we want this string here to change dynamically from name to belt depending on what button the user clicks. So what we'll do is, instead of having name here, we'll just pass through a variable and we'll call, uh, call this order, right? So that order is a variable and we've not put that in quotes because the variable is going to be a string which is already going to be in quotes. So how do we pass through that order variable? Well we're going to do it on the ng click event. So when someone clicks this button what we want to do is set this order variable to be equal to name. And when someone clicks on this button what we want to do is set this order variable to equal this belt. Okay so let's do that. All we need to do is say order that variable is equal to, and then we have to pass it through in single quotations because that's what it's expecting right there, and then we'll say name. So now when someone clicks this name button, it's going to set this variable equal to this string. And then this string is being passed through there, so it's going to order all those ninjas by name. Okay, if they click this one, we want to set order to belt. So let's do that, order equals belt. And now when the user clicks this button, belt is going to be in this variable, pass through here, and it's going to order the ninjas by belt color. All right. But we also want the belts to appear on the screen. Currently, they're not doing. It's just this thing right here. So what I'll do is I'll wrap this in a H3 first of all, like that. And then I'll put another H3 closing tag there. Then what I'll do is I'll just create a span tag down here, and I'm going to output ninja Dot belt and that's going to be the color of the belt so it's going to output like green or black or yellow or whatever then I'll do a space and I'll say belt so it's going to be the color then belt for example black belt green belt okay so let's save this now and take a look in the browser you can see we get the green belt yellow belt black belt thing right there that's this stuff outputting it and we've got these two buttons order by name and order by belt so when we click this it should order them by name alphabetically which it does pretty cool and when we click this, it should order by belt alphabetically, which it does, B, G, Y. Pretty cool, right? So that was a pretty simple example of using ng click. We can do things that are more complex with it, and we can interact with the controller to implement that more complex functionality. So I'm going to go through another example now, which is going to demonstrate that. And uh, this time around, what I want to do is add some kind of cross in here so that if you don't like the look of a ninja, you can be like, nah click the cross and it deletes them from the list. Okay, so let's add in that functionality. The first thing I wanna do is add in that cross over here so that someone can click it off. 
So to do that, I'll just come under here, under this H3, and I'll just do a div with an ng click. And we're going to come back to this in a bit and pass in that functionality later. But for now, we're just going to pass in this cross right here. And we'll save it. And now you'll see this cross. Now, I'm going to give this a class equal to remove, like that. Save it again. And hopefully, this should be, yeah, viewed a little better now. This is the CSS in action, which I, uh, I did beforehand. Like I say, you can download that from GitHub. The link's down below. Okay, so now the cross is there. We want this to remove whatever is here if we click it, okay? But before we do that, I just want to tidy this up a little bit, this little section, okay? Now, you've seen how we can use expressions there to output data, but we can also use expressions in the tag themselves, in other things. So, for example, I can do span... And then I'll do style equals, I'll do background, and then I'm going to do a expression right here, which is going to be the ninja.belt. And that's going to pass in a color, don't forget, right here. Yeah? So if it's green, it's going to style this green, this background here. Okay, so let's save it and see what happens. That's pretty cool, right? So now we've got some kind of visual effect going on as well, which shows the color of the belt. Now, I'm also going to give this a class, and that's going to be equal to belt. And again, this is coming from this style.css that I made beforehand. So let's save that, see how it looks. Boom. Pretty good, right? Except, okay, you can barely see this, so we might have to uh, tweak our styles at some point. But for now, it will do. So let's add in this functionality then. So when we click this, we want to fire off a function which is going to remove this ninja, right? So we need to hook up that functionality right here. We need to pass a function through for this to fire when someone clicks it. And the way we do that is just by saying the, the function name right here. So we'll call that function remove ninja, okay? And we invoke that function by using the brackets. So let's save that. Currently, nothing is gonna happen if we click this because we don't have this function anywhere. So where do we define that function? We define it on the scope object in our controller. Okay, so let's come above here and let's just make this function. So we'll say scope and then we'll say remove ninja, right? And we'll set that equal to a function like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass the ninja through into this function, okay? Now then, where are we getting that ninja from? Well, we can pass it through right here because we've got access to this ninja object, okay? So let's pop it in there. So that's going to tell the controller right here which ninja we're currently on because each time we output an li, we're going through a certain ninja, okay? So every time this is output, ninja equals to the current object that is being output. So we're passing through that object right there into the controller. So we'll save that, go back into the controller, and then in here, we'll add in that functionality. So what do we need to do? Well. The first thing I'm going to do is create a variable and I'm going to say that variable is the removed ninja and I'm going to set that equal to scope dot ninja dot ninjas rather which is here I'm going to reference that and then I'm going to use a JavaScript function called index of okay and what this does it will find the index of if I pass through ninja which is this thing passed through to us there. If I pass that into index of, it's gonna look for the index of that ninja on this scope object, okay? So if it's the this one right here, it will come back and say, look, it's in position two because it's zero, one, and two, okay? So that's gonna return two if it's this one. It's gonna return one if it's this one, zero if it's this one, etc. So once we've got the index of that, what we need to do is modify this right here, this array, to remove that element. So imagine that this returns two. Then we want to remove the second element of this array. So the way we can do that is by saying scope dot ninjas. And again, I'm going to use a JavaScript method called splice. And I'm going to pass through removed ninja and then one. So what that does is it says, okay, I want you to get into this array, this splice method, and I want you to start at this point, which we've passed through, because that's equal to here. So, for example, if that was two, it'd start at this point, 
and I want you to remove one element in that array. So that's what it does. It just takes that element out, okay? And then we're left with the remaining elements. So let's save that now and refresh. And now when we click one of these, it's gonna remove it. Okay, so quickly, just to go through again, we've made a cross here, attached this ng click directive to it, which is invoking this remove ninja function on the scope object, and it's passing through the current ninja object, okay? Then, when that function is fired right here, we've got access to the ninja object that we pass through, we create a variable, and we find the index of that ninja in this array right here, once we've found that index, we then splice this array, starting at that index and removing just one element from it, okay? So that's how it's being removed. So let's save that again. If we refresh, it's gonna come back. So then we can remove another one, remove that one, and remove that, and now we've got none left, brilliant. Okay, so guys, that is ng click. Uh, might be a little bit complex at first, especially maybe this part, but, uh, just keep practicing and you'll get the hang of it eventually, okay? Any questions, feel free to add those down below. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to share, subscribe and all that stuff. And I'll see you in the very next tutorial.